My Packers fans, you can finally breathe. You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everyone, to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou. It's March 8th, 2022, and a wild couple of hours has passed in the NFL. It's incredible, honestly, just how much the NFL has dug its claws into the sports media world where no matter what's going on around it, when things just start to feel like they're slowing down, the news just picks right back up and it's not even one thing or two things. It's like three or four things all at one time. Franchise tag deadlines going on today. So teams are tagging players left and right. Aaron Rodgers announced that he is returning to the Packers and the Packers also had another trick up their sleeve and franchise tagged Devontae Adams. Russell Wilson is now a Denver Bronco. There is a lot to talk about. So sit back, hit that like button, hit that sub button, and let's read and react to some of the big news that just came out the last couple of hours. I was at the gym when this was all happening. So I'm sitting here trying to speed through my workout so I can get home shower and put this together for you guys because I was super excited to talk about this. My goodness. So Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams both are back in Green Bay for at least next year. It sounds like Aaron Rodgers might end up being there for the remainder of his career as well. So Pat McAfee on his show opened things up, said himself, and Aaron Rodgers told him he's coming back. Announced it. News media outlets all ran with it. Ian Rappaport went out on Twitter and actually said that the deal was for four years and $200 million with $153 million in guaranteed. And then Pat McAfee fired right back and said, no, actually, that is false. And then to double down on that, Aaron Rodgers himself jumped up onto Twitter real quick just to make a little statement about it. He himself, in quotes, hey, everyone, just wanted to clear some things up. Yes, I will be playing with the Packers next year. However, reports about me signing a contract are inaccurate, as are the supposed terms of the contract I, quote, signed, unquote. I'm very excited to be back, flexing the arm, hashtag year 18 with a heart, end of quote. So Rogers is back. He's announced it himself Uh, I saw some people kind of reading between lines, and I don't know if that's just them reading between the lines a little bit more than is necessary. Rodgers did only say next year, so that's interesting to say the least. Uh, I don't know if that ends up turning into anything, if it really is just one more year with the Packers, Uh, but it's interesting that Ian Rappaport has a four-year deal that somebody must have told him about, and then Rodgers is just specifically stating next year. Rodgers is a methodical person with the way he talks about things and says things, so I don't know if there's a reason for that or not, or if that's just the internet reading too much into what he was saying, but regardless, Rodgers is back. No deals in place, but he's going to be playing at least next year in Green Bay, and then of course, the Packers later on announced as the 4 p.m. deadline approached for the franchise tags, Devontae Adams will be tagged, which seemed more like an inevitability once Rodgers said that he was going to be back because it sounded like Adams wanted to either play wherever Rodgers went or maybe go somewhere else if the Packers did not bring Rodgers back. With that in mind, Adams is getting a whopping $18.4 million from that franchise tag. It's going to be very interesting to me how the Packers handle all this money because I'm assuming Rodgers is going to get a hefty lump sum of cash to be coming back to the Packers. He's worth every single penny. He's a back-to-back MVP. Haters be damned. It does not matter. He only has one ring. He has played the position of football quarterback at the highest of levels the last two years, period, end of discussion. Uh, But my Packers fans, how are you guys feeling about this? Pretty crazy results. Um, I'm excited for Aaron Rodgers. I kind of felt like this was the way things were going to go. I know that last year was a really rocky offseason, and it felt like Rodgers was gone. But after having the year that they just had, if Green Bay was, as the reports were saying, really trying their best to keep Rodgers there, I kind of felt like there's no better place for Rodgers to really go right now. While the Broncos were apparently strongly considered and even retirement as well, I felt like ultimately the right choice and the smart choice was always just Green Bay keeping the team together and continuing to run things forward with their reigning back-to-back MVP at the quarterback position. The second big story, and this is just as big and 
if not bigger. I'm just doing the stories in order from the way they were announced. The announcement came pretty quickly after Aaron Rodgers announced that he was going back to Green Bay. And that is that Russell Wilson is now the quarterback of, or I should say, will be the quarterback pending a physical and an approval from Russell Wilson, the quarterback of the Denver Broncos. The deal information came out a little bit after the announcement was made. Broncos apparently have sent two first round picks, I'm assuming this year and next year. Two second round picks again this year, next year, and a fifth round pick along with quarterback Drew Locke, defensive lineman Shelby Harris, and also tight end Noah Font. So bunch of players, bunch of picks, and quite honestly, uh, if I was to kind of give my opinion off of what they sent, not a terrible deal. Not a terrible deal. The Seahawks, of course, sent over Russell Wilson, and then the Broncos even got a fourth-round pick in return. I'm assuming that like fourth and fifth-round pick right there was kind of like a swap of picks, uh, so the Broncos weren't just completely depleting all of their draft picks and whatnot. But when I look at the compensation player-wise for what the Seahawks got, apparently some GMs around the league still think Drew Locke might be able to be a viable quarterback in the NFL in the right scenario. On top of that, D lineman Shelby Harris, that's a big one. I think having him up on the inside there will be really good for Seattle. The Noah Font thing, though, I don't think is as big of a deal as it might sound. While Noah Font is a very talented tight end, don't get me wrong, I'm actually a very big fan of his. And I really thought that if somebody like Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers went to Denver, he would hugely benefit from the fact that he had one of those two QBs throwing to him. Pete Carroll has a weird history of not using the tight ends correctly. They had Jimmy Graham in his prime right off the big years he had with the Saints, and they did not really do much with him and made him block more than anything else. And Jimmy Graham, like just his production fell off a cliff. Then you have Gerald Everett, I believe right now, who up and down, I guess per se, but the, the passing game never really went through Gerald Everett. And I don't feel like he was a featured player. Like you have Lockett and Metcalf as your featured receivers. And of course you're running back in Chris Carson when he's not injured. So I was a little bit confused as to how the Noah Font thing really came into play. I don't really find that player a win for them. Obviously the pick compensation, excellent stuff. The time now though is on for Seattle. They need to hit on all of these picks And they need to do a good job in bringing in talent to whether it's build around Drew Locke or build a team around whoever their quarterback is going to be after this offseason. Because I'm very curious of what they're going to do with all that. Uh, The time's now. Uh, You got to hit on these picks. I, I will say if I was to give my like way too early prediction on who won this. I would probably lean towards Denver because they still have such a great young nucleus of really good defenders on defense. Um, And then on top to couple that with the fact that now they have a quarterback to go with all the great skill players they have. I mean, you have Javante Williams, you have yourself, Jerry Judy, uh, Oakwa Bunham is their tight end that was behind Noah Font, And he's a very athletic guy. And I think he could be a receiving threat if Denver features him really well. And then of course the defensive side, I mean, you name it, they got defensive players all over the field over there. We don't need to get into all of them, but I feel like my early prediction right now, if I was to give you a pick, I would say Denver won this trade. Seahawks, they got a Trevor Trove of picks. They got some good players. Let's see what they do with it all. Uh, ESPN stats and info also noted, this is an interesting thing, Russell Wilson's going to be the first quarterback to start for a team that he beat in the Super Bowl. Clearly left a good impression there, but that's a little interesting tidbit of information I saw. I figured I'd throw that out to you guys. It's definitely an ESPN stat type thing. Uh, But the AFC West, man, they are loaded now. Talk about loaded. You have Russell Wilson. You have Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes. Derek Carr is the worst quarterback in that division, and that's... Uh, that's not that bad, to be honest with you. Derek Carr was lights out for a large portion of this past season and played really, really well. He's going to get a contract extension over there in Las Vegas, barring some psycho trade. But, I mean, the AFC West, man, is going to be a competition. And it was noted that Denver was Russell Wilson's first choice this offseason for where he got traded to. And that's also interesting. He apparently does not fear the idea of playing in a loaded AFC West of the quarterback position. He honestly liked the challenge and the idea of it, which respect to him, hats off. He went from honestly the most competitive division in the NFC for quite some time right into probably the most competitive division in the AFC now. And he stayed in the West to do it. So really interesting stuff there for you guys. Questions for my Seahawks and Broncos fans. How are you feeling right now? Broncos, you guys excited? Seahawks, 
What do you think of the compensation? Where do you think the Seahawks are going to go at quarterback now? And then who won the trade? Because that's probably the biggest question. Like I said, if I was to give my like way too early prediction, it would probably be the Denver Broncos just because of getting Russell Wilson, a Super Bowl winning quarterback. And there's a lot of unknown with what the Seahawks just got. Because realistically, if you're if you're being completely transparent and open about the potential outcomes of the draft, the Seahawks could whiff on all of these picks. Not likely, but it's definitely a possibility to look at. But I'm excited nonetheless. Looking forward to see Russell Wilson in the orange and blue, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Seattle does at the quarterback position. But that is my read and react for today. Let me know your comments down below, opinions on all this big news. My Packers fans, my Seahawks fans, my Broncos fans, what are y'all thinking? How are y'all feeling right now? I appreciate y'all for watching. Have a good one.